How long do you expect a person to wait? Well, I, t- well, but I mean, you, you have, know, come I mean, on. The, the freedom to bear arms has no meaning if I can't actually get the arms. Right. Well, well, the right the, to bear arms in a couple weeks. Yeah, there's right, no, there's no waiting periods in the Second Amendment. I, I, don't see, I don't read that anywhere in the Second Amendment. Well, how about the First Amendment? You can say what you think, but not right now. Yeah. You'll be quiet. You have, you're required to right. be quiet. Right. For, really for, uh, just for 10 days. So and when you bets. cool down, when you've really thought through what you want to say, then you're allowed to say it. All bets arms? are off now. You know what? I'm not asking the Bubba Armory to participate on his Twitter right now because he just really pissing me off right now. But how am I pissing off? By defending the freedom to bear arms? No, by by not uh, not taking my not taking my word for what the better choice of the candidate is here. And you know what? You haven't even really what done... What do you mean I am taking your word? No, I'm saying that you like Marco you Rubio. The disturbing things about Marco Rubio, I, my opinion is on hold until I run these down. Yeah, he's, he's, he's actually kind of agreeing with you. He yeah, changed well, his mind. You see, and God forbid he ever puts me over and says, you know, Bubba, you're right. Marco Rubio's a real dildo. I like Charlie Crist. You know... You know, you never. You well, it's never... sort of hard to like Charlie Christ. He just seems so phony to me. You know, you know, you know like what? You. Know, this is a guy that we know personally. You want to talk about phony? Look at Tucker Carlson and how he handles you know guys like Al Sharpton on TV, and then you know he goes home and he beats his wife and smokes Marlboro Reds. <laughs> no, no, but I am not at all phony because I I admit yes I have sh- sucked up to Al Sharpton pretty assiduously over the years, and I'll, but I'll, I'll completely admit that. Well, look, it takes a phony person uh, to, to a certain phony. extent to even become a politician, in my right. opinion. I mean, you know, You're I right. think they're every all, politician they're all is phony in one way or another. <laughs> Just it's a just a matter of trying to find bit, like, the I'm not really least sure phony one. For. But, but, you know, like one time Spice saw Charlie Crist when, when he was governor in a bar, and Spice walked over and talked to him, and he was cool to him. And, and Yeah, we had a beer together, and we, you know, yeah. you know he's, he's good like that. He's a guy's I, guy, I agree, man. he's great like that. He's a what guy's kind of bar guy. was this? It's a regular bar downtown St. Pete. Might yeah, I'm a bishop or something like that. It was that. called uh, Ceviche. Yeah, yeah Ceviche. Charlie does, just doesn't oh, don't think give he's better than Ceviche, people. man. <laughs> I got a boycott on Ceviche. Saying, you know what's kind of weird, though, is that at every Charlie Crist speech, he has to have these giant fans on the floor in front of him, so he always has hey, fans it's, blowing. It's yeah, you got to you look like you're, you got to stay cool yeah, under we're pressure. Not, we're not fly fishing in Maine, buddy. Image is everything. I mean, it's like Vietnam down here in humidity. Man. <laughs> you're lucky. You're lucky. I'm not a politician. I'd have hot bitches fanning me with the with the pond fronds. <laughs> little geisha girls. Do you have that? Uh, that would be. That would be. God vote for I'm that like, guy. It's like, hey, I'm Bob the Love Sponge. I'm here to address my uh, you, you people, and uh, don't mind the geisha girls here that are fanning me out, and, uh, occasionally uh, wiping some dabbing some sweat off me. But I'm a, I'm a larger gentleman, and I and I'm a little bit nervous right now talking to you. And it's hot. It's like complete apocalypse now. Like you're dropping acid before the firefights. You're <laughs> yeah. I think I think Sharpton. You're should, surfing uh, in the middle of a, ha- a, a howitzer on floor. Sharpton that kind should of borrow some of those fans, man, because that dude sweats like crazy yeah, like when he's pig. up there speaking. He's a pig. He's like Dinkins. Yeah. <laughs> Who's the sweatiest politician you've ever had? Sweatiest politician we ever had. Probably, probably that Barney Frank guy, wasn't it? Yeah, he? that. Not, you know, you know who was really sweaty was Dinkins when he was mayor of New York. Yeah. Well, he Nixon, had every reason. Nixon just sweated up. A you know, who I ran into the other day is Jeb. And I like that guy. Yeah, you know, Jeb, Jeb Bush, he, he's saying he's not gearing up, but he's he's been uh, he's been more of a focal point he's an as idiot. of late. You know, you know, Jeb Bush actually did a pretty good job when he was here. He he enacted the castle laws, which right. means you can fight before flight. Right. And Charlie Chris was the attorney general that went along with that. Yeah. So if you're a Jeb fan, then you, would you uh, wouldn't you agree with his selection, attorney general? Um. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure Chris was a fine attorney general, and I'm sure he's been a Man, fine governor. There's I just, something that you are. I there's... need to learn more. Look, I, you, you've thrown me back on my heels. There's nothing I despise more than gun control and free handouts to people who got here illegally. Carbon, I carbon, really hate those. Carbon things. tax. How about a carbon tax? He hates that too. How about for a carbon? You know, carbon. He cannot possibly be for. He a supported tax. a carbon tax. Uh, Speaker Rubio supported a carbon tax. I, if you would have listened to me earlier, I said that, but you didn't. You're too. You're too. But uh, I just don't believe it. I mean, that's crazy. <laughs> Well, you know what? I mean, that's like saying he's a, he's actually a Satanist who's been sacrificing children. I mean, there's just no way. If he really supported a carbon tax, he's going to win in a GOP primary. Come on. He, you know why, though? He's, he's obscured all the issues with this Tea Party nonsense. He's obscured it all. It's not when, when the media, he got a press conference the other day, when the media started asking him specifics, he did terrible. And this morning, he's running away from all his interviews. He's he can't, Now, when you get down to the nuts and the bolts of the interviews, Marco Rubio is... Not willing to address any of it. Yeah, but uh, I don't. You think the Tea Party stuff is phony? We're sending a reporter to down to Nashville. I think uh, tonight to go cover the convention. You guys should go down there. I, no, I think the grassroots part of the Tea Party is genuine. I'm talking about the people that show up that really care about the country. Yeah, I think though that the organizers that are charging five hundred dollars a person in Nashville are in it to make money off of these people. I think that it's a little bit pathetic that uh, you know Bill O'Reilly comes to Tampa and uh, his opening speech, you know, to do his what's what's what are they called? 
Uh, him and the Gordon, thoroughly pathetic tour. The federal, the what's that? The, what, the, thoroughly pathetic. Tour. Yeah, they go up here and they basically and and at the end of the day, <laughs> really? uh, Bill O'Reilly no. when he when he was inter, when he was introducing Glenn Beck on stage <laughs> in Tampa, Florida, he says uh, Glenn Beck started his radio career out as Bubba the Love Sponge. That's what that's what Bill O'Reilly said. Really? Yeah, he did yeah, say that on stage. Yeah. <laughs> Were you? Wow! Did anybody correct him? No, it was a it was, joke. It's well, part of his comedy act. Oh, it's a joke. Oh, oh, oh. It's, it's, so funny. it's so funny. He's not going to even get it. He's in, he, you know, he's, in, he's in Tampa, Florida. I've been here, you know, 12, 14, 15 years. I'm the king of Tampa, Florida. I'm the highest fine, you know, one, the highest one fine time fine personality in America. You know, Bill O'Reilly, when I got when we got fired, uh, thought that we were the new, you know, the worst thing ever. The, probably the worst people in the news or whatever the hell. Yeah, he had the, he had the guy that complained on us, Vanderland. He had him on TV and wouldn't let Bubba come on and respond. Yeah, wouldn't let me come on and respond. Had the guy that got me fired, the guy that you know that uh, hooked up with uh, the Salon dot com uh, and got me fired and railroaded us, railroaded all of us, but uh, wouldn't let me get on the air and you know. As this Douglas Vanderlyn character, the guy who taped me and transcribed us and things like that, uh, had him on, put him over. He's the best. You know, he's this a community watchdog. He heard bad words on the radio, the Bubba Show, and all the guys. I have to be dealt with accordingly. They uh, got fired today. So here's Douglas Vanderlyn. Pay homage to him. But they're not going to have me on uh, to be able to defend myself. Do you want to hear something? Do you know Eric Bollert? Do I know Eric Holder? No, Bollert. Oh, yeah. Oh, you know, you want to hear what a scumbag this guy is? Um, yeah, I'm not. I, nothing you'll say will surprise me. Okay, but, he worked for Salon.com, correct? You, yeah. Okay. He's, 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 he's the pathetic. The lowest. I yeah. hate even to use his name on the yeah. radio. You, you yeah. want me, you well, want me to give you, you another? Wait, wait till you hear this. Wait till you hear this. So this Vanderlyn guy had complained. Douglas, saying, Douglas Vanderlyn's the guy who complained initially about our show being broadcast in Jackson. Right, oh, I remember. Right, okay. Okay. So he, Douglas Vanderlyn had complained to the FCC two times, and the FCC had denied all his complaints. Same complaints, twice. So... Eric Bollert gets a hold of this Vanderlyn guy, gets him in touch with a with an attorney in D.C. named Arthur Belundiak. They rework the transcripts and rework the tapes. Belundiak lobbies the FCC and gets us fined. That's what a and you know why Eric Bollert did that because we exposed this guy, this professor. In, you know, I, I, I know Tucker knows who Samuel Arion. Samuel Arion, the pro- professor from USF that since pled guilty to, to some terrorism related charges and is being deported. We exposed that guy. That's why Eric did that to we're us. We're the guy that we're, we're the ones that blew that out of the water, and that's why that Eric Bollert did it to us. Wow. Yeah. That's what a low life scum he is. Just the lowest in the group he works for, whose name again I just don't want to mention on the air, but it's this. Just complete group of hacks and losers who attack actual journalists. Really, I mean, it, it could be the lowest group in all of Washington, and that's saying a lot. Now, yeah. now the story we told you, how low is that? Disgusting, but yeah. not surprising. So, meanwhile, Bill O'Reilly puts uh, you know Vanderlyn on. Uh, and there's a much bigger story behind us uh, and our FCC violation, and the subsequent all of us getting thrown off the air for four years. There's a much larger story behind it that people don't know about. Much like what you said, Brent. You know it, how it was organized. You know through Salon.com, and then uh, this guy that did this this uh, Eric Bollert. You know the other guy, the Belindiac guy, does it pro bono, and he was a former FCC attorney under Reagan. Yep. And they uh, and they take our tapes and. Add Add, they actually add our to, not to the transcripts to the actual audio. They they actually when they transcribe the tape, we we would have f words and various things like that beeped out. But they would on the transcripts did not beep them out. They did not put like f beep 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 k. Yeah, they would put the, they would, the, they, the they actual would, word. They would put the actual word, even it, though those didn't go out over the air. No. Right, no. and the FCC says in the actual order that they they send down the fine. The really? FCC says in there that the tapes don't match the transcripts. It says it in the order. Wow. Yeah, it is. It was this one of the most underhanded, scumbaggiest moves, and it was all defending the Samuel Arion, who got, remember Sheikh Rahman, the, the 93 Yeah, driver? of course, yeah, the yeah. Sheikh Abdul Rahman with the uh, Santa hat. Yeah, the guy who's in federal prison right now? Yeah. Al Arion's the one that got him into the country to begin with. And we're the bad guys. Wow. And we're the bad guys. And, hold on, Brent, the FCC, I mean, everybody mad since spies, everybody could participate. The FCC, the reason why they did that is they needed, uh, you know, a bad guy. They needed a boogeyman, and Howard and I, they needed a boogeyman to solidify their cleaning up, you know, uh, wholesomeness of uh, of the airwaves via the Janet Jackson Super Bowl nipple gate. They, yep. they needed, Spice, you agree? Oh, yeah, a- a- absolutely. So, they, needed you know, a, when, they needed a boogeyman. When you're watching the Super Bowl and that happened to Janet Jackson, I looked at uh, my ex and I go, that's not going to be good for us. I was right like, there. I mean, that was like the beginning of the end right there. It was just a giant, giant snowball <laughs> effect because, you know, once something like that goes down,